I'm Mary Massey, Manager of Programs and Education here at Thomas Jefferson's Poplar Forest. And for today's installment of the Women of Poplar Forest Tour, we're going to be discussing Mary Elizabeth Cleland Randolph Epps, or Elizabeth, as she was known to her family. Elizabeth was married to Francis Epps, Jefferson's grandson who would inherit Poplar Forest. Now they were married in 1822, and we know by 1823 that the couple is living here at Poplar Forest. Jefferson's last trip is actually in that same year of 1823, and he's coming here in part to ensure that Francis and Elizabeth are settled into the house. Now, Elizabeth was a very well-educated woman. Her parents even ran a school for part of her childhood. And she's described by Francis's cousin, Ellen Coolidge, as, quote, an uncommonly beautiful woman and remarkable for good sense and sweetness of temper. Now, unfortunately for Elizabeth, her time here at Poplar Forest was often plagued with a sense of loneliness and isolation. She missed her family and friends who were living in Albemarle County. Um, and she often writes to Jane Randolph, wife of Thomas Jefferson Randolph, one of Francis's cousins, lamenting about her loneliness and how much she misses her family and friends. She writes, quote, It is a sad, sad thing to be set down as I am in a land of strangers. I have found the neighbors less sociable than I expected, but they are certainly very kind and friendly. And quote, When I think how completely severed I am from my home, my family, and friends, I have a sickness of heart as painful as it is indescribable. But she's also, also writing Jane and asking for advice about running a plantation. It was not an easy task for any woman in the early 19th century to be running a large plantation and household. And uh, Elizabeth is struggling a little bit. She's asking for advice about how to run the dairy and even for advice about how to run her poultry yard. She writes, quote, My geese in particular have imbibed such a spirit of adventure from the pleasure their journey up afforded them that they disdain the limits of the poultry yard and are often found in the evening a mile from the house. And then, uh, even though Elizabeth is complaining about feeling lonely and wanting to make friends with the neighbors, uh, when they do come to visit, she often complains about having to be put upon to entertain. Uh, when a neighboring gentleman and his family of six came to call one night for dinner, she wrote, quote, They are all utterly odious to me, yet I am forced to make a dinner for their dainty palates, which are the labor and turmoil which a young housekeeper must have on such occasions. And to deck my face with smiles of welcome whilst in my heart I would sooner see them on their way to Jericho, or in the sailor's phrase, to the southeast corner of hell than in my drawing room. Now, her time living here at Poplar Forest was not always plagued by unhappiness. She did have some happy moments. The first and possibly most important being the birth of her first child, Jane. Now, that did not happen at Poplar Forest. She gave birth at her family home, Ashton, in Albemarle County. And when she was well enough to travel, she and Jane would meet Francis at Monticello, where uh, Jefferson would be able to meet his great-granddaughter before coming back here to Poplar Forest. Now, unfortunately for Francis and Elizabeth, by the mid-1820s, when they're living here at Poplar Forest, um, the plantation and the house are not in the best of shape. Um, the land around Poplar Forest where crops were grown um, were, was completely depleted. This had been a tobacco plantation since before Jefferson's ownership started in the 1770s. It was very difficult to raise crops here and enough crops to sell, so economic troubles plagued the family. The house itself also had some trouble. The roof leaked. Francis wrote to his grandfather that the roof leaked in a hundred places. Elizabeth wrote that it was, quote, a leaking hull of a house. And a fire in 1825 damaged some of the roof, and even repairs after the fire did not stop the incessant leaking when it was raining outside. The house was also cold and drafty. Uh, Elizabeth recalls one January night seeing the bed curtains move as they were trying to fall asleep uh, because it was so drafty in the house. And so in 1828, Francis decides to sell the house out of the Jefferson family and move to Florida where prospects would be a little bit better. So they sell the house in 1828 and temporarily move in with Elizabeth's family who's living in Lynchburg. The next year in 1829, they moved down to Florida, followed uh, shortly thereafter by Elizabeth's parents and two of her siblings. So at least some of her family is down in Florida with her. Now the family does prosper in Florida. They do very well down there. Um, but unfortunately for Elizabeth, she only gets to enjoy her time in Florida for a few years. After giving birth to her sixth child in 1834, she succumbs to complications from childbirth and is buried in Tallahassee, Florida. Now, she's often hailed as someone very lovely and polite and possessing great benevolence and gentleness. 